Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. So this is one of those tabs that's been open for weeks on my computer. I'll uh, be preparing for a video and I come across, you know, this interesting information that doesn't fit into the video. So I'll just put it to the side. Weeks go by and then I finally get to it. So at this point, I can't remember what I was doing or how I came across this, but uh, this is a quote from Elder Howard W. Hunter. Um, at the time, he was in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And uh, it was the October 1970 General Conference. The name of the talk is, Where Then is Hope? And uh, this has to do with signs, right? This is uh, primarily a Second Coming channel. We watch for signs of the times. And sometimes there's debate about what is a sign, what is not a sign. And so I found this and I've added it to my spreadsheets. There's a section of the talk uh, titled Sign Seekers. And he says, there have always been those who wanted a sign before they would believe. During his ministry, the master was asked on many occasions for a sign. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, can ye discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. That's from Matthew 16, 1 through 4. Perhaps it was with them, as with many today, truth is not recognized as truth unless accompanied by the sensational. Okay, so let me just pause right here. Uh, this is something that comes up time and time and time again as we look at things happening in the world, uh, things happening in the church, things unfolding uh, seemingly in a natural way, but there'll be people that'll say, you know, for this or that, no, that's not a sign. No, that's not fulfillment of prophecy. Um, and they'll give some kind of rationale. And usually it has to do with the fact that it's not sensational enough. It's not big enough. It's not this or that. It has to be obvious, right? And I do not think that that's the case. And the reason why is because I'm collecting all these quotes uh, that say to the contrary, from prophets and apostles. So we're going to go over a few of those just as a review, but let's finish this one. So perhaps it was with them, as with many today, truth is not recognized as truth unless accompanied by the sensational. What would have been accomplished had the Lord called down thunder and lightning, or plucked a star from the sky, or divided the water to satisfy the curiosity of men? They would probably have said it was the work of the devil or their eyes deceived them. Signs are evident to the faithful. And I think that's the key right there. Um, let's go to my spreadsheet called Quotes, Common Misconceptions. And in column A, I have the topic. So in this case, signs. In column B, the misconception. In this case, it is only a sign if it's supernatural or unexplainable. But um, you may want to access this. You may want to access my spreadsheets on your own and spend some time here. The link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. But uh, I have a number of misconceptions that have to do with signs. So other ones are uh, prophecy cannot be fulfilled unless I am aware of it, or the signs of the times will be very obvious. Or, these, <clears throat> these aren't signs of the second coming. We haven't seen anything yet. So that, that's like a common one, that there's this like always present idea that, well, we haven't seen anything yet uh, because things are going to be so bad. Uh, to which I would say, I think that there's the... <clears throat> that um, lesson that we learn in primary... People have brought this up in the comments where you have a frog that's in, you know, a pot of water. Uh, if you put a frog in a pot of water when it's already boiling hot, it'll just jump right out. But if you slowly turn up the temperature, it can't distinguish from when it was 
you know, an acceptable temperature to when it becomes boiling and then the frog dies. And I think there's a lot of people in that situation where things have slowly gotten worse and worse and worse, uh, more dramatic, more dangerous, um, you know, just all the craziness that we're seeing today. It's much different from uh, the year 1984, for example, but because it's happened so slowly, according to our time, sometimes we don't pick up on just how crazy things have actually gotten. So if you were to take somebody from 1984 and brought them to 2024, they may say, oh yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about when I was saying back then, you haven't seen anything yet. Does it make sense? Um, and then I have one other misconception about signs, uh, and that is we shouldn't watch for signs of the second coming. We should only focus on the here and now, which is not true. We should watch for the signs of the times. We're commanded to do so in the scriptures. I have all the scriptures over here, and there's a lot. And then we have words from prophets and apostles, uh, including Joseph Smith. But let's go back up here. Uh, you can check that out uh, later if you'd like. Okay, so here's the newly added quote that we just read from Howard W. Hunter. Now, let's read a couple other ones. This one's from Joseph Fielding Smith. At the time, he was first counselor in the first presidency. Uh, this was the April 1966 General Conference. And he says, The words of the prophets are rapidly being fulfilled, but it is done on such natural principles that most of us fail to see it. And that's the key. Natural principles. Joel promised that the Lord would pour out his spirit upon all, all flesh. The sons and daughters should prophesy. Old men should dream dreams and young men should see visions. Wonders in heaven and in earth would be seen and there would be fire, blood and pillars of smoke. Eventually the sun is to be turned into darkness and the moon as blood and then shall come the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Some of these signs have been given. Some are yet to come. The sun has not yet been darkened. We are, we are informed that this will be one of the last acts just preceding the coming of the Lord. One wonders if we are not now seeing some of the signs in heaven. Not all, for undoubtedly some of them will be among the heavenly bodies, such as the moon and the sun, the meteors and, and comets. But in speaking of the heavens, uh, reference is made to that part which surrounds the earth and which belongs to it. It is in the atmosphere where many of the signs are to be given. Now pay attention to this. So again, the misconception, it's only a sign if it's supernatural or unexplainable. And this is what Joseph Fielding Smith says. Do we not see airships of various kinds traveling through the heavens daily? Have we not had signs in earth and through, through the earth with radio, railroad trains, automobiles, submarines, and satellites, and in many other ways? And you guys, I think that we could add today, uh, we have things like the internet, Wi-Fi, and, uh, you know, we have these flat screen TVs, so on and so forth, AI. Okay. There are yet to be great signs. The heavens are to be shaken. The sign of the Son of Man is to be given. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn. So it doesn't have to be uh, mysterious. It doesn't have to be magic. It doesn't have to be supernatural to be a sign. The point of a sign is for the Lord to communicate something to you. There's various ways that the Lord communicates. He communicates through the Spirit. He can communicate through other people. He communicates through the prophets and the scriptures. But he also gives signs. It's meant to let you know something. It doesn't have to be magic to let you know uh, whatever it is he's trying to tell you. Okay, just a couple more. Uh, this is... At the time, Elder George Q. Cannon of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, uh, he later became a member of the First Presidency. Uh, this is in the Millennial Star, November 3rd, 1890. Do not look for some great cataclysm to occur, which will show all the world that this is the kingdom of God. That has been one of our great thoughts. Per perhaps such a thing will occur, but I will tell you that I have observed during my life that God works in natural ways. His purposes come forth 
or sorry, his purposes come around seemingly perfectly natural, so natural that the world cannot see the hand of God in them. It requires faith and the Spirit of God to show these things. Um, I'm going to move on from there. And then there's this one. I really like this, but it's kind of long. And uh, he repeats that same idea that prophecy is fulfilled in natural ways. And unless we have the the spiritual eyes to see, uh, we ourselves will miss it. Um, well, yeah, let me just read this part. So, now, I would not for the world say one word to lessen in the minds of my brethren and sisters the importance of these events. I would not say one word to weaken your proper expectations, but my experience has taught me that the Lord works in the midst of this people by natural means, and that the greatest events that have been spoken of by the holy prophets will come along so naturally as the consequence of certain causes that unless our eyes are enlightened to or enlightened by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Revelation rests us, we will fail to see that these are the events predicted by the Holy Prophets. Okay, and then later on, you take two persons, one who has the Spirit of God, whose mind is enlightened by that Spirit, the Spirit of Revelation, the same Spirit that rested upon the prophets who wrote the revelations and prophecies we have, you take a man of that kind, and then you take another who has none of that spirit, and put the two together, and the one the one man's eyes will be open to see the hand of God in all these events. He will notice his movements and his providence and everything connected with his work, and they will be testimonies to him to strengthen his faith and to furnish his mind with continual reasons for giving thanks to and worshiping God. While the man who has not the Spirit of God will see nothing godlike in the in the occurrences nothing which he will view as supernatural as many suppose everything that exhibits exhibits god's power to be or nothing which he will accept as a fulfillment of prophecies his eyes will be closed his heart will be hardened and to all the evidences of divinity of these things he will be impenetrable and uh, i'm sorry but i feel like i see that so much you know, yeah, not everything necessarily is a sign. Um, I think some people take it way too far, uh, but other people don't view anything as a sign. But I think if you have the Spirit, you will more or less uh, receive that communication from the Lord that the second coming is close and other things too. Um, I also want to read this one. Uh, this is the misconception prophecy cannot be fulfilled unless I am aware of it. I feel like there's a lot of that as well in um, a portion of this LDS second coming community that everything has to play out for you like a movie and you have to be privy to everything that's going on uh, in order for prophecy to be fulfilled. So this is Elder D. Todd Christofferson of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Uh, you can find this on Church News published June 4th, 2024, Scott Taylor and Joel Randall, episode 191, Elder Christofferson reflects on his own mission uh, to Argentina, you know, on returning to South America to, to dedicate the Salta Argentina temple. All right, he says, you don't see things unfolding that are unfolding. You don't see what the Lord is putting in place. And the people the key people and the key moments that are happening, you are not cognizant of all that going on in the moment. And I don't blame myself or anyone else for that. I mean, we are human, we are mortal, and we have a limited perspective. But we ought to have the faith, I would say to myself, have the faith that the Lord is doing his work and can do his work, and that your part of it can be helpful, can be meaningful, and more will come of what you are doing than you perhaps imagine, or certainly more than you can see right now. So we're not always privy to things when they occur. Um, I always see a lot of objections about, well, you know, this isn't, you know, this prophecy because we haven't seen it. Well, how do you know that you are going to see it or that you are going to recognize it when it happens? You know, you may not... Be aware of every single thing when it comes to these prophecies. Um, 
yeah and then i have these other ones but i think i'm going to wrap it up right here so i'd say let's just let's take note of everything that's going on uh you know that's what i'm doing with this channel i'm trying to keep these spreadsheets just to note unusual things and things that seem like signs uh, ultimately let's wait and see what actually happens but even more important let's be prepared in case we're wrong about when we think the second coming is going to happen let's be prepared ahead of time let's uh, keep our mind open our minds open to the fact that these could be the signs that we might be much closer than than we might think or what or you know much closer than what our preconceptions are so i would encourage you as always do what you can to get on the covenant path if you're not already on it so if you haven't been baptized uh go talk to the missionaries get a copy of the book of mormon you know uh, gain a testimony join the church after that progress down the covenant path take the sacrament every week uh, go to the temple receive your initiatories and endowments uh, be sealed together as a family i would encourage you to do those things sooner than later you know do it according to your own time and work with you know the lord listen to the spirit but with everything that's going on in the world right now uh, i would not i would not take the chance that you have all the time in the world to do these things all right so that's gonna be it for this one if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below also make sure to share it and i'll talk to you guys later